Okay. Welcome to the MailRite Real Estate Agent Show, episode 34. Today we have Melinda Goodwin. She's from St. George, Utah. She's a luxury real estate advisor. She comes from a construction home building family and she's been doing real estate about five years. She's transitioned over from being in a nurse and still has a little bit of nursing, but uh, is really back in the market now and ready to start building houses, selling them and helping folks and advising them on getting just that right tweak on that custom home. So anyway, Melinda, welcome to the show. We're only a few hours away down Highway 80, like eight hours, next city over. <laughs> it's like eight hours. Do I go there? Do I go to the beach? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Melinda, for joining us. Um, you're a bit of a YouTube fan, aren't you? You've done just the odd little YouTube uh, video, haven't you? What, what made you get into that? That'd be my first question, Melinda. You know, what I started was watching Gary V on the Ask Gary V show. And then I picked up other people who are doing YouTube and videos and the short, quick ones and realized that at about 100 episodes, they were really starting to gather a big following. So the day I decided to do the videos was a day I said, OK, I'm doing a 365 day challenge where I get on every single day. And some days there's no makeup, some days it's it's pitiful. But I do a five to ten minute video just specifically to teach marketing to real estate agents. All right. So um, you're in the luxury side. What have you learned uh, around marketing in, in the last couple of years that you think people should really understand, fellow agents? What's What are some of the keys you think – connected to successful luxury marketing and selling? You know, I coming from the industry of building, and that's where we were. For 17 years, my husband and I ran a custom home building company. And so when I got into real estate, naturally I gravitated toward the higher end just because that's where I feel most at home. And, I mean, honestly, let's face it, I can sell three houses in one year and make $100,000 compared to selling a ton of houses and working extremely hard to make fifty or $60,000. So that was kind of a pull toward that as well. When I got into the luxury arena though, what I found was most people really treat their luxury listings the same as they treat all the other listings. If you've got a $200,000 listing and all you have to do is put a sign up and they're just going, you know, and you're, you're selling four to six a month. That's great. But then you happen onto a million dollar listing. What do you do with that? You can't treat it the exact same. It's not the same. It's, it's a baby in itself. And when we talk about being a luxury expert and we talk about knowing luxury, it's not just the fact that I know all the woods or I know the difference between marble and granite or, imported Italian tile compared to any other type of tile, travertine or, you know, ceramic tile. It's the fact that when I'm marketing, I actually target market and I set up a marketing plan specifically for that listing. Right. So what other, you know, what other methods have you learned that are effective linked to luxury around online marketing and do you use that and do you use social media what kind of forms of marketing have you found the most effective i am a fan of social media i really have only been on there for about three years really consistently but it is very inexpensive you can do if you okay. pick the right seo words you can hit you know a thousand people two thousand people with five bucks i mean why wouldn't we be doing that? That's where all the older people, the 40s to 60s, are starting to get into Facebook and things like that. So we really need to be on that marketing platform. Um, you know, traditional marketing like postcards, if I'm doing 
like say I get a listing in a specific neighborhood, I'm going to do a blanket postcard to say I got the listing. And that's normal traditional real estate marketing that we do. But when I'm looking at doing a marketing plan, I'm looking at um, pulling together what I call a focus group with a title guy, a loan guy. And I really want to use his database as well as mine to where we're really making a plan because we've troubleshooted that house, we've troubleshooted that area and where are our buyers coming from. And then my title guy pulls all the addresses. So really it's, it's a mail type thing until we can capture that lead. Yeah, um, in your read because you also written a few articles for Ingman, haven't you? And your last one was the difference between sales and marketing. And I think a lot of agents, it's all you know for obvious reason. It's all about getting leads, must have leads, and they forget that the marketing lead leads to the leads in a way. Um, so you've got to do some farming, to, you know. But they're all about the hunt. They, then they forget about the farming. Can you talk about that? Because I, I thought, especially your videos, you talk about that as well, don't you? I do. I go in extensively about that because when you're at a listing appointment and you really want that listing, the first thing they ask is, how are you going to sell my house? How are you different from the other agents and how are you going to get this house sold? If I just say, well, geez, I'm going to put my sign up and I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch people walk by because I've got, you know, I'm paying $10,000 a month for leads that are coming in, which is, I'm not knocking that because I make a lot of money paying for leads too. But when I get leads coming in from like Boomtown or um, Commissions Inc, all of that, rarely is it a higher end number. It's my bread and butter. It's the ones that are the two, the $300,000 listings that I'm getting those leads for, right? And so the reality is, especially in Utah and a lot of places you have people coming like New York, people come to New York, they buy a million dollar house. That's, that's their bread and butter. But here, the people that own the million dollar houses don't live here. So I can't market here. I have to market elsewhere. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather double sign it. I'd rather double sign it. And so why am I not out there finding my own buyer? Yeah. That's a good point. So what uh, what have been, so you're looking for your own buyer. So can you go through some of the mechanics? Let's say you've got a house that's a million dollars and you've been hired. What are the mechanics of marketing that? Right. First, I set up a budget. So like for a million dollar house, I got to grab my calculator because it's been a long day. A million dollar house, if I'm going to make I'm going to go on one sided commission. So that's 3% on average, right? So that's going to be a $30,000 commission. I take 20% of that and that's my marketing budget. That's a $6,000 budget. That's absolute first thing I do. Now I offer my sellers an opportunity to save um, money on their listing. So I list at 6%, 3% buyer, 3% seller. But if they upfront my $6,000 for me, to market their house, then I, I list it for five. That way I have the money there. But the key here with that, even in that situation, is always meeting with the seller, showing them what they you have done, showing the insights of all your social media and making sure the marketing's working, adjusting the marketing, that sort of thing. And that in turn builds your credibility with your seller. Because now you're saying, I'm actively doing this. What do you think? These are our postcards. What do you think? I'm putting an ad in this newspaper. What do you think? You know what I'm saying? So now they're actively in marketing their own house with you. And sometimes they know people that you don't know. They have access to people you don't have access to. So if you share your postcards, you buy them, but share them, they'll, they'll send them to their friends and family. So you're actually helping them sell their house as well, which helps with that marketing and getting to know your database and increasing your database. So once I do that, then I have a focus group and I pull in my title guy. I pull in a loan guy that's a jumbo loan, you know, depending on what price range it is. I will sometimes pull in my homeowner seller and then um, a neighbor, someone in the neighborhood or the um, HOA president, CEO or somebody involved in the HOA so that I make sure 
that when we're marketing, I hit all my bases. You know, the title guy is going to say, well, he's going to have access to seeing who's second home uh, owners in that neighborhood or who's primary homeowners, who owns houses that are valued higher than what they purchased it for, that sort of thing. My loan guy is going to be able to do extra work to help me find financing if I need to find financing. And we're all going to make a marketing platform that works for that listing. All right, that's great, Melis. Uh, what I think we do is we go for our break and then we come back and we talk some more about how to market that one million dollar house. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're back, folks. So, uh, Melinda, I think you in our prior discussion, you said you've done a bit of television work as well. <laughs> yeah, I have in my own TV show here. It, that was kind of a weird thing. I was in with some production company in our college, and it was a try, like a partnership. And I said, why don't you do a real estate show? I ended up being the writer, the host, and the producer of a show called Zion Home, which we ran here, where I showcased luxury homes in St. George. And the purpose of that was, you know, to get a little bit of uh, kudos for everybody here in St. George. And I opened it up to all real estate agents who had million dollar listings and actually wanted to introduce them on the show because in order to get a million dollar listing, it's huge here. And I wanted to allow them a little bit of camera time. And uh, how did that go? It didn't. <laughs> amazing, amazing. You must have been, were you really surprised? I was. I was really surprised because my production cost for that was about $600. So originally I was just offering them and it was, it was a 30 minute show where we were showcasing their home for 30 full minutes. And um, for 600 bucks, I mean, you can't even beat that. And I was offering it to them and literally this is some of the comments I got was, um, why would I put $600 into a video where I'm going to lose the listing in six months because it's going to expire and then they're going to find another agent. Even though I was showcasing that agent as a listing agent and really giving them some great marketing opportunities, it, it, I, so that's how the videos and YouTube got started. I'll be honest with you. I went to a meeting and I offered them a video. I, we restructured it. So I introduced them as the agent. We were going through the house. It was a real, it was a real real estate show at that point. We kind of re, re, restructured and the function of the show was going to be so much better for the agent, which is exactly what I wanted. And I came from a meeting and had that comment and I got on YouTube and I was like, are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me? Why are you not paying $600 to showcase your million dollar listing? You're going to make $30,000 on that thing. Why are you not working for your money? And I really was kind of irritated. And so I said, this is it. I'm yeah. doing a 365 day challenge to teach you how to market your house. And that's kind of how it got started. Yeah, but I've observed is um, by working with a, quite a few agents now and doing it. I've, we're on our thirty fourth interview, and we've had a few people now on the show. I've noticed there's such a broad spectrum of different attitudes and different personality types in real estate, and yeah. you get all sorts of things said to you and all sorts of kind of strange remarks and attitudes. Would you say that's about right? Yes, absolutely, because it's probably the easiest thing to get into. It really is. So anybody's going to get into it, and everybody has their own opinions. And it brings, I mean, when you're with Keller, Keller Williams, they do that disc thing, you know, with the personalities, and they figure out what type of personality you have. It, it's specifically to put people where they fit the best. And so – you get all range of people, which makes it hard because, you know, we're really frustrated because the real estate industry is looked down upon. I mean, I came from nursing, right, which is the highest respected profession in the world to the least respected profession. <laughs> I don't think it's quite that bad. <laughs> and it's because of the way we handle it. It's, it's, it's not about 
I mean, I technically handle it differently. You know, I wear a suit or a tie or whatever. Okay, so what? I dress professionally. But we have to act professionally too. And it, it's more than ethics. It's about working for our money. Yeah, I do get that. Um, the interesting thing, your remark about um, Vaynerchuk, he said that you only start getting success on your YouTube channel when you get round the 100 mark. Can you go in, can you remember a little bit did you give any reason why that is or that was just that was a personal study I did all right yeah so I was watching different people who were who were doing videos and I recognized their followers increased exponentially at the hundred mark so I figured if I do a 365 day challenge at a hundred I really know exactly where I stand if I'm on to something that really needs attention or not and so that was kind of the goal. The first milestone was 100 mark so that I could see, am I even effective? Am I working? Is it working? Is it not working? Is it being accepted? Or am I just pissing people off? Yeah, because that, that's, an, you know, it's understandable, but a lot of agents, they just want results here and now, don't they? Um, they don't accept that something takes a bit of time and you've got to be consistent at it. I think the word consistency is a word that's really lacking in the real estate industry. Would you agree with that? I totally agree. And if I would have known how hard it is, I mean, it's easy to get into, but it's so hard to develop. And if I would have really known how hard it was to develop, it probably would have scared me away. Yeah. That's, but, that's, really, that's really good what you said. And I was going to say, I say consistency is the agent. All, all good agents are consistent and they work hard. You can't really survive unless you're consistent. You can do maybe yeah. one or two or three or families, and that's okay for a broker. I'll, I'll gladly take on agents who only do three or four, but they're not getting a good split, and we make a lot of money off that transaction. But consistency is very important no matter what you do, whether it's doing a podcast or a netcast every day at 9 o'clock in the morning, which I do, and I'm getting pretty good luck right now. Right. So. Well, And that was one of my broker's questions because I work with Engel and Volkers, and one of his questions was, what is the purpose of your videos? Why – why are you doing this? You know, because it's not directed to the public. It's directed to real estate agents. But the reality is if I'm teaching you, then I become the teacher's teacher. And when you become the teacher's teacher, your authority goes up. And so I, in the back door, should get, you know, a tremendous amount of work from that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Bill's got some more questions. I've got about one more question. And then if Bill's got some questions, that'd be great. Um, what what do you see as your relationship with your broker? Um, what do you see as your part of this, and what what part do you see your broken? How do you mentally work out the relationship from your business and the business you you got to do with your broker? How do you rationalise it all? It's and that's hard because I've been to four different agencies, which wasn't um, ever in the plan. Right. I started out with Keller Williams and I was there eight, nine hours a day, every single day, calling people from Boomtown, showing that I was really dedicated to be here. And the interworkings with some of the agents and stuff just um, was frustrating. And I actually watched every back office video that Keller Williams ever put on, and I read four books. So within five months, I was stale. I couldn't figure out, you know, I, I wasn't getting the, the help I wanted or thought I should be getting because, you know, it's the brokers, um, and I'm not saying all of them because we'll go on further, but it's it's more – sitting in their office while you do all the work and collecting all the money and the leads they get are going to their top producers, not to the younger agents who are coming in because they want those leads to close. And it's understandable that those leads go to the top producers. But at the same time, when you're there being dedicated, how do you get those leads from your broker? Right. And the reality is there's age 90, I think it's like 95% of agents are gone within six months because it's so hard. So when you're sitting there for forever, the broker sees you sitting there, but you have to really prove that you're really going to stick around. They're not going to really just hand you stuff because you're not, you know, because you might be like everybody else who just leaves, which is what I ended up doing. I ended up changing brokerages and becoming on the luxury 
um, team because that's really where I wanted to go anyway. And I was really getting a ton of flack through our real estate community of why do you even want to do luxury? We don't understand. You haven't bought your time. You haven't proven yourself. You haven't done what it takes to get there. And even as I was leaving that agency, one other agent came into me and gave me the hardest time. And here he was sitting on a $2.7 million listing. And he said he closed with 50 houses the year prior. And he was giving that listing away because he even didn't feel like he could give that listing justice. And I'm like, at what point then do I become qualified if you've closed 50 deals and you still don't feel like you're qualified? That's correct. The reason you're not qualified is because you're doing it wrong or you don't have enough confidence. And that probably wasn't the best thing to say as I was leaving as an exit interview. But you know, the reality is it's all about your strategies. And I knew that from the very beginning, but joining a team and then I became the luxury division director for Remax first realty and ran that division for about seven months. But at the same time I had people in my brokerage that was co-listing their luxury with another agent and not in the luxury division because they just wasn't if my ideas must be out of whack or something, you know, I couldn't think of what was going on. So I switched into angle and Volker, which is high end. That's what they do. They love high end. They're special in it. They love marketing, which is absolutely imperative. And once I hit that, it's I'm home. This is where I belong. I actually, meet once a month with one of the owners and he mentors me and then my broker she's fabulous she knows that if i need a lead she'll give me one if, you know i set her houses whatever she's just willing to keep me going and i think that the video thing was a little off topic because i'm really teaching other agents how to do our job as a luxury agent but like i said the purpose of that is to teach and is to increase the credibility of luxury real estate for sure Hi, Bill. got any more got any other questions bill no other than uh what are you going to do next year what's your plan what's your plan for this year actually what's your business plan for 2016 now your season when what is your season do you have a season like right now uh, we're up north so the snow's just melting you're down there not far from las vegas what a couple hours hour and a half close to red right. rock canyon sort of out right. that direction Saint yep. and what's your population so yeah, our parade of homes comes in the middle of February, and that is our major money maker. For all of our real estate agents, they usually make the most money between February and April, and then, you know, it fades until October, and then it's a little warm between October to yeah. It gets hot, so it's the reverse season. Yeah, this time of the year is your season when you get the snowbirds down. Also, do you ever go over to Las Vegas, the National Home Builders Association? I, I love it. I love that, that show. Did you know this year? They just had it. I know I missed it. I normally go every year, but this year we didn't go. And it's, it's like withdrawals. <laughs> it's amazing. I love that. I've learned so much over the years from going to the National Home Builder Association Conference. It's so much fun. You see so much. You do. You do. And if you stay to the very last day, you get a lot of free stuff. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be an architect, uh, it's, which I started out at 2.0, and they're always there. And it's nice to see them. I say hi. And I missed it this year too. I almost went. I love to go, even though I don't build right now. I just like to go. It's a blast. Yeah, it is a blast. So, what's your favorite thing about real estate? You talked about how tough it is, but what's your favorite thing about it? You know, I think the nursing part of me comes out. It's it's being a part of somebody's major life decision, and knowing that if I'm a part of that and I do a good job, that I can sleep at night knowing that I either saved them money or made them money in the process and found exactly what they were looking for. Yeah. My wife's been a broker for 25 years. We left a city of 200,000 where I was a vice mayor. So she knew everybody in town, but she did it for the same reason you just said, and she knew everybody. Now she's in Reno and having to restart. So I can also relate and understand how hard it is to restart and get those relationships again. But she, really ha she had families, multi-generation families that just gave her lots and lots of listings and sales and transactions from the same families because you took care of them when you're younger. Right. Right. And that's the thing, you know, I worked labor and delivery for eight years and mm -hmm. I really looked for that connection again because it's a life changing event. Right. 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 No, that's good. And you can relate to that. So, and the other thing about real estate, you just hang in there and you keep on going, you build your list, you'll do fine. 
And just um, so it, it is, but I say a high end house is a lot of work. We know it's a lot more work than uh, a, a two to three, 400,000. And you got to spend more money up front. Man, they spend huge dollars up in Tahoe around yeah. the on some of the 17, 18 million dollar projects. It's amazing yeah. how much they spend. Well, and you know, and that's the thing. And if I'm spending 90% of my time in that bread and butter, I'm never going to be able to spread it, right? Yeah. I'm not going to be able to focus what I need to do in that higher end. Yeah. I just got one um, one additional quick question. Obviously, you've had a few articles um, put on Eggman. Um, yeah. What made you do that? And has it has it helped you at all? <laughs> Apart from some English guy uh, emailing you asking you on the pod on a lab, um, how how's has that increased your exposure? Do you feel? You know, um, about a year ago, I went to Inman Connect, the Luxury Connect in mm. LA, and was there. When I went there, um, I had a question. They asked our questions. Of course, I'm going to ask questions because I'm. We paid eight hundred and ninety five dollars to go there. I'm going to ask questions. And they said, oh, somebody from Utah, they were so excited that somebody from Utah was here. And then at the end, he said something about an Inman con um, contributor. So I just emailed him, Brad Inman, and said, how do I write for your magazine? <laughs> and it ended up just that's how I got started. And originally I was writing about how the nursing interplays with business and real estate because there's a lot of time management things like that that i can i can adjust and change um but then when i presented this video idea it went to inman select right off the bat and i couldn't ask for a better platform to be on other than inman they are great and they are they are there for their agents for sure and it's been it's been amazing yeah, I think I will approach them and knock out a few articles out and see. Well, maybe we have a chat about it next time we have a chat. Yeah. Well, Melinda, I think it's been a good discussion. I think we've covered some in I wanted to talk to somebody that's actively in the luxury market and get okay. some insights because you're the first person we've had a discussion on the luxury side. So I really thank you for coming on. And, um, I think we have do something interesting. Thanks. Thank you. So wait, one last thing. One last question, John. Yeah. Well, how, what's the easiest way for a listener to get a hold of you? Oh, cool. And if so they get to St. George, they can find you, buy a house, check it right. out. Right. So you can go to my website. It's www.melindagoodwin.evusa.com. That's probably the best way to get on there and explore St. George. Um, otherwise, I'm on Facebook. Melinda Goodwin, luxury expert. That is my key communication. Okay. Later through that. Sounds system. good. Is, is so that's don't go it. away. I'm we'll on, be on YouTube media for a little bit more as we finish up this uh, portion. Okay.